Hello, everyone. My name is Viviana Marcel. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to English for Academic Purposes, EAP Paragraph Writing. First, I would like to give thanks and appreciation to the Urgent State University, to the U.S. Embassy in Tashkent, and to the U.S. Department of State English Language Specialist Program for supporting this project and this series of videos. Much appreciation and thanks. This EAP paragraph writing video project is divided into 12 videos teaching EAP paragraph writing and teaching strategies. Each video is approximately 10 minutes in length. Each video is divided into five minutes of EAP paragraph writing lesson and five minutes of teaching strategies for EAP paragraph writing. I am the instructor, E. Viviana Marcel. I am an English language specialist with the U.S. Department of State English Language Programs. I am also an ESL, ESP, and EAP instructor and teacher trainer. Here are our video titles. Introduction and Why, English Language Organization, Paragraph Definition and Format, Types of Paragraphs, Two videos on the topic sentence, supporting detailed sentences, transitions, conclusion sentence, the writing process part one pre-activities, and the writing process part two writing activities. And the final video is from paragraphs to essays, an introduction to how the structure of the paragraph is ex almost exactly like the structure of the essay. So if you know the paragraph, it's easier to write essays. Thanks for watching this series. The video will begin now. Hello everyone. Welcome to video six of 12 EAP writing. Topic sentence number two. This is our second video on topic sentences. Good versus bad topic sentences. Your topic sentence is the most important sentence in your paragraph. The topic sentence controls the focus and content of the entire paragraph. Let's talk about some of the qualities of a good topic sentence and a bad topic sentence. A good topic sentence is clear. It's to the point. Apples are good for you. This is too broad of a subject. We are writing a standalone paragraph. So this idea is a little what we would call weak. It's vague. Good, what does that mean? Uncontrol, unclear, controlling idea. It's not clear enough. It's too broad. Now, this, the sentence on the right in the blue, apples provide essential nutrients. We've made it more specific, clearer, provide essential nutrients. Essential nutrients is a topic you can write about. It clarifies what makes apples good for you. Essential nutrients. The reader knows that the paragraph will be about essential nutrients in apples. A good topic is concise, not too wordy, too broad for a standalone single paragraph, the very first topic sentence. San Francisco is a city with many people from all over the world. It's too wordy. The second sentence is much better. San Francisco is a cosmopolitan city. It means the exact same thing. A cosmopolitan city is like Tashkent with many people from all over the world. Less words, same meaning. It is concise. A good topic sentence is not a fact accepted as true. Everyone accepts as true. Libraries have book, books. That's an accepted fact. Airplanes are the fastest mode of travel. That's an accepted fact. The sun comes up every day. That's an accepted fact. It's those big things we take for granted. Why is that bad? Because it's boring and not interesting. Everybody already knows about it. It's a general fact accepted by everyone. It's too broad for also for a standalone single paragraph. You've only got five sentences, a little, maybe a few more. It's just too broad. Now this second topic sentence, some libraries have unusual books. You've reduced it to some libraries and you're talking about something specific in the library which is unusual books. Why is this good? 
it engages the reader's attention using the word unusual. Oh, unusual books. It's more focused and more interesting. A good topic sentence is not a general fact everyone accepts as true. A good topic sentence is written in an active voice. English word order is in SVO, subject, verb, object. Here's our first topic sentence. Discount store websites are used by shoppers to save money. It's passive voice. The subject is not performing the action. The shoppers, they're the subject in the, in the sentence. Look at the second topic sentence. Shoppers use discount store websites to save money. Active voice. The subject is performing the action. They're using the websites to do what? To save money. The subject is performing the action. A good topic sentence is written in an active voice. Long topic sentences are not okay in general. Okay, so I've used the word broad and narrow already. Let's get more specific about this. Topic sentences too broad in scope. Let's go back to our Mahatma Gandhi topic sentence. He was very famous. Mahatma Gandhi was very famous. Again, this is too broad for a standalone single paragraph. Whole books have been written about his life. Many books, in fact. It's too broad, not specific enough. So how do I make it narrow? Well, you can use the five W's and the one H to narrow or broaden your topic sentence. Where, when, why, who, what, how. Mahatma Gandhi was an influ influential leader. What was he? You, you ask those questions. Where was he? When was he? Why was he? Well, he led his people out to freedom. You know, so if by using the five W's and one H, you can either narrow or broaden. So why is this good? Active voice, the subject is performing the action. He was influential leader. Specific focus on one part of his life. Topic sentence is too narrow in scope. Again, use the five W's and one H to narrow or broaden your topic. Why is Mahatma Gandhi like to eat rice and dal every day? Your topic sentence and the controlling idea say what you can say in the paragraph. You can only talk about him eating rice and dal. That's much too narrow. It's too specific. It's limited in scope. You can only write about rice and dal. The second one is a little more broad. Mahatma Gandhi followed a strict dietary routine. The dietary routine, the rice and the dal can be part of it. It's an active voice and it's broader, including all foods he ate. And then maybe you could talk about why. What did he eat? Why did he eat it? When did he eat it? He believed food should be simple and earthy. He viewed food as an essential ingredient that shaped human consciousness. He wrote books about related to food and health. He experimented with various diet diets before. You know, there's information out there easily to find about him following a strict routine. Writer's checklist. Is my top, this is for both video five and six. Is my topic clear to the reader? Is my topic sentence clear to the reader? Does my topic sentence tell the re reader what my paragraph is about? Is my topic sentence concise? Not too many words. Is my topic sen sentence a fact generally accepted by everyone? If it's yes, don't use it. Is my topic sentence written in the correct word order, subject, verb, object? Is my topic sentence written in the active voice, subject, verb, object? Is my topic sentence too broad for a single paragraph? Is my topic sentence too narrow for a single paragraph? Have I used the five W's and one H to broaden or narrow my topic sentence? Have I written and rewritten my topic sentence at least once? These checklists, this is what we use all the time. Teaching strategy, exit tickets. What is an exit ticket? It's a quick and powerful way to check student understanding. The teacher asked a question linked to the day's lesson or activity or anything in class that day. It's a formative assessment. The teacher uses the exit ticket information to adjust teaching objectives. They can inform your teaching practices. When can I use an exit ticket? Traditionally, ex exit tickets were used 
by students. They were used by teachers to have students summarize in one sentence or two something they learned that day. And as they left the room, they would give their teacher the answer written on a scrap of paper. Sometimes teacher want, teachers want names, sometimes they don't. Exit tickets can be used at the end of activities, the beginning of a lesson. Actually, just any time a teacher wishes to assess what their students are learning or what they already know. How often should I use an exit ticket? Some teachers use exit tickets daily. It depends on what you're teaching. I use them daily, but I, had to, I use them like sometimes I only wanted one word. Sometimes I wanted a sentence. Sometimes I wanted more than one sentence. Sometimes I wanted a picture. It's interesting. You can figure out how it works for you. Exit tickets should only take one or two minutes to answer whatever you choose to have them write or draw. Some teachers can use them at the end of activities within a class. Exit tickets should be introduced and explained to the students. This is really important. Tell your students, exit tickets are not a graded assessment. Exit tickets should only take one to two minutes to answer. Sometimes they need to put their name on the paper, sometimes they don't. The information on the exit ticket helps the teacher design the lessons. This is what your students need to know before you use them. Exit ticket example questions. Name one important thing you learned in class today. Write or ask one question about today's content, something that left you puzzled. Do you have any suggestions for how today's class could have been approved? Been improved. We did a mind map activity in class today. Was this a useful learning activity for you? Why or why not? It's important to give them, them a time limit because they can, sometimes they take, they want more time. Benefits. Exit tickets are a quick and powerful way of checking student understanding. You can use them at any time you want, middle and beginning of your class, doesn't matter, it's up to you. The answer should only take one to two minutes. You want a quick assessment, it's not anything that's going to take a long time. This is the end of video six. Topic sentence part two. Next video is about supporting detailed sentences. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.